That was a very good introduction. Well done. So hello everyone. Uh, thank you for uh, joining us uh, this afternoon. It's my first time in Tartu. Uh, not my first time in Estonia, mind you, uh, but the first time in this wonderful uh, university city you have here. Um, so yeah, who am I? I'm going to skip over the, the first few slides very quickly, but essentially I'm the founder of a website called tech.eu. Uh, we cover the European technology industry uh, from an editorial perspective, so we have a newsletter, we have a news site, we have a podcast, uh, etc. But we also do uh, research, so we're also a data company where we basically uh, provide market intelligence about the European tech industry to corporates, investors, policymakers, and whatnot. Uh, so that's just uh, a little bit of an introduction, not important. Um, I have about 15 years worth of experience as a journalist. I spent uh, almost five years working for TechCrunch, and then another three years as the European editor for the next web. And TechU is now five years old, so uh, almost 15 years worth of experience as a journalist, which brings me here. To this stage, not important, not important. Not important. This is important. Uh, this is what we're going to discuss uh, today, which is basically how I think startups and startup founders should look at PR and how they should approach journalists and how can they essentially, this is actually a better title, how can you increase your chances of getting coverage from media? Uh, and the reason why I enjoy doing this talk is because when I started out being a tech blogger for TechCrunch, I didn't have any background uh, as a journalist. I, I don't have a journalism degree, I never studied journalism, I've never worked in PR when I started writing about uh, tech startups and innovation. Um, so I kind of had to learn this myself as well, the hard way. And I was always surprised by how little understanding there is in the startup world of how the media side of things actually works. Um, so I started doing this kind of workshop on, you know, just telling founders how we like to be approached, um, you know, when you're looking for publicity. Uh, and I find that a lot of founders don't have the, even like a basic knowledge of how these things work. So that's why I really enjoy doing this kind of talk, uh, is because for me this is all very much common sense. Uh, but I can also understand as a startup founder, and this is especially true in Europe by the way, most of the founding teams here are, are very, very technical. They have an engineering or a software background, they make a product, and then they suddenly get into a position where they go, right, so now we have to reach out to press, how does that work? Do we just like, email them, call a journalist, like, how does that work? What, what, what gets him interested in our story? Um, so that's essentially what I'm going to talk about today. Uh, first thing you need to understand as a journalist, this is sort of what my inbox looks like. Um, not my email inbox per se, but everything that's incoming. Uh, could be Twitter DMs, could be people I meet at conferences, um, phone calls, Skype, Twitter, you know, you name it. Um, so this is basically what I have to go through every day. Lots of information coming in, other articles, press releases, um, pitches by email, calls, people I meet, all of that's incoming. I get the question sometimes, like, how do you select what you write about? That's not the tough part. There's always stories to tell, always. The difficult part is filtering out all the noise and trying to find something that's interesting for my audience. So you already have to go through sort of a filter. Not too uh, different from when you talk to early stage investors. You know, they have lots of incoming, but at the end of the day, they can only invest in so many companies per year. Same goes for a journalist. We get a lot of incoming, but Obviously, we can only write so many stories per day. So I'm going to give you a couple of rules that you have to apply before you reach out to journalists. All of the stuff that I'm going to say in the beginning of the presentation is stuff you have to do before you pitch. Rule number one, pick some ass. Not this kind of ass, because that might get you into trouble, but do something amazing. It's quite basic and it's simple, but it's not. You have to do something unique. You have to build a product or a service that gets attention even if you don't necessarily want it. By that I mean if you make something that is so good or you uh, enter a market in such a way that the competition gets scared or tries to copy you or whatever, you're doing something right. This should be your main concern, always. You shouldn't worry too much about PR, especially in the early stages of doing a company. I get asked quite often by, by founders, like, when should we hire someone to do our PR and marketing for us? And my answer is always the same. You have to do this yourself until you get to a point where it's simply not feasible or, or doable anymore to do it you know, 
when you get to a size of like 50, 60 persons and you're growing very fast, then you can consider like hiring someone from the outside or internally as a PR person. But your very first concern should always be how can I build the best product or service for my customers, right? Because if you do that and you, you, know, you build a business and you really make a noise in the market, then we will uh, automatically get, uh, well, you will automatically get our attention at some point. So rule number one, build a really, really good product or service. Rule number two is do your homework. Basic stuff, if you reach out to journalists, try to get a sense of what else they write about. If you reach out to a journalist, try to understand what the publication they write for, or you know, if it's a TV station or radio, what is their audience? What do they want to achieve? What are they interested in? What do they read? What do they share on Twitter? If they're on Twitter, usually journalists are. Uh, what do they share? What's their interest? Try to get a feel for the publications that you're reaching out to before you start pitching them. Rule number three is build relationships. I find startup founders tend to overestimate the effect uh, an article in TechCrunch is going to have on, on their startup, but they also underestimate the long-term um, benefits of having relationships with journalists. Getting publicity, getting an article in TechCrunch is not going to finally get that investor to sign the term sheet. It's not going to get you a lot more customers, usually. It's not going to get you millions of users overnight. Usually that doesn't happen. But what will happen if you consistently build relationships with journalists over time who can help you sort of tell your story as you go along, that can have a very profound impact on your startup. So I also don't want to downplay the uh, benefits of uh, you know, getting press. Uh, rule number four is learn how to do basic storytelling. Uh, there's a ton of free resources online that you can use to teach yourself how to uh, become better at storytelling. Again, coming back to that a lot of the founders uh, of uh, startups, especially in Europe, are very technical. This is something that they sorely lack. Storytelling techniques are not that difficult to learn. And it is so crucial, not just to get press, but for everything. When you hire people, you're basically pitching your company. When you look for investment, you're pitching your company. When you're talking to customers, potential partners, you have to pitch your company so many times over your, the span of your, your business's life that you want to have that skill. You want to be able to tell a story. You want to be able to package what you do in simple terms that they can understand, but it also sets you apart from the competition. Very valuable skill to have, very easy to learn, but you have to put, on, put in the effort. Uh, rule number five is essentially pitch like a pro. Um, this is sort of what comes after all of that. You're finally ready, you have your story, you have your product, you have something to share. How do you actually pitch journalists? Um, so we're gonna get into that. Just an overview. First of all, good product, do your homework. Try to get a sense of who the people that you're reaching out to, who they are and who they write for. Because you're not pitching the journalists per se alone. You're pitching journalists and their entire audience. So keep that in mind. Uh, build relations beforehand. Could be personally at events, could be online, could be by becoming a source could be become like commenting on their articles, whatever. But build relationships. Craft a good story, pitch like a pro. More on pitching. I always show this t shirt that I've never actually worn it on stage, so it's like a redundant slide at this point. Yeah. Pitch me there one more time. Uh, some pitch tri tips and tricks. Uh, the first thing you need to understand, and this is nothing personal, but the fact that you exist, that your startup exists, means nothing. It doesn't mean anything. It might mean something to your mom, or your significant other, or your dog. It doesn't necessarily mean anything to the journalists in question. That's not to say that we don't care about what you do, it's just there's a lot more startups than there are journalists. So the fact that you have a startup in itself doesn't really mean that it's an interesting story for us to tell. You, you might have been you know, doing this for years and you, you might have had you know, an excellent idea and a unique product, but we don't know that. The fact that you exist doesn't really mean anything. So, a couple of things that I'm going to give you as sort of a tips and tricks to sort of skip ahead of this, you know, this funnel. Because that's where you want to be. You want to be at the bottom of this and not like one of the many startups just pitching. You know, we, we're here. We're a mobile social network or we develop a game. You want to interact with media early. Big mistake European startup founders make is they develop a product and once it's ready or they think it's ready, uh, and there's like product market fit and they're getting some traction, that's the time to start pitching journalists. No, you want to build relationships before. Not necessarily pitching your product, but you want to build relationships 
by, again, I, I told you this before, but being a source, um, providing information that doesn't necessarily have anything to do with your startup, but in your market or in the vertical that you operate. You want to do that early on. The earlier you start, the better your chances are of getting coverage over time. So it could also mean having having a drink for journalists. So by all means, if you see me tonight, feel free to buy me a drink. I accept it. Um, give journalists an angle. Very, very important. Give us something that we can build something on top of. You don't have to write the articles for us, but you have to give us something. In the first paragraph of your email, if it's by email, some journalists, by the way, prefer calls. I don't. Feel free to ask journalists how they want to be pitched before you start, by the way. Uh, but if you send an email, try and make us interested in the first paragraph because we get a lot of them, so we skip, right? So get us interested, not by what you built, but why are you building this? That's always, by the way, one of the most interesting stories about a startup is almost never what you built, it's why you built it. Why are you the one that are, is going to make noise with this startup? Why are you going to be the one to create a fuss in the market? Why? Consider our audience. If we write for a very small publication that reaches maybe 500 people, but they're the 500 people that you need to sell to, that is more important than a TechCrunch article, which has millions of readers, but not necessarily the ones that are gonna buy your product or service. So try to get a sense of the publication that you're pitching. Who are they targeting? And who do they reach? Consider their competition. News. Tech news is extremely competitive. So we always want to be first, we, want to, we always want to be the, the first one to discover a new startup or a new service or a new innovation or like a new uh, investment that we can get to first. Once it's out there, it's no longer news. So that's why it's so competitive. Paint us a picture, storytelling, try to frame your startup into a larger picture. What does your market look like? What's the competitive landscape? How is the product that you've built different? Not just the features, but why is it different? Why are you the one that is going to make this successful? Avoid buzzwords, innovative, leading, uh, market changing, revolutionary. Just cut it out. A friend of mine developed a browser plugin that cuts out all of the words that I input, these buzzwords, out of every press release that I get. And I can still do my job. So you don't need those words, please. Don't waste our time. Try to get to the point. You don't have to write this an essay. You also don't want to make it too short, but don't waste our time. Try to um, build a place on your website that we can find the information that we need. Who's your team? What's your product? How is it different? Can I see screenshots? Can I have a demo? Is there a video that, you, that I can see? All of that stuff, make sure it's there so we don't have to go looking for it. Don't lie or misrepresent. This is life advice, not necessarily just for startups. But don't lie. Just don't misrepresent what you do. Don't say that you're operating a bigger market than you actually are. Don't say that your product does things that it actually doesn't. Don't talk shit about your competitors, ever. Just don't. Because that reflects you really poorly on you, and also when we find out that you lied, it's tend to have like a backwards effect. Sorry. I know. Interact with media early, angle, audience, competition, all of that, and some more. Am I done? All right. So you can read this stuff. Thank yeah, you very much. I'm, I'm just chiming in, so uh, let's, no let's make an applause. <laughs> you know, I know something about Robin that you don't know. I know that Robin has a friend. Oh, I'm scared now. Yes, and Robin's t-shirt is on you. Yeah. Is that true? And and his friend doesn't believe him that he's on the stage here. Yeah, yeah it's going to be a nice surprise for her. So let's make her, her, her. Let's make her, you know, the proof. So please, everybody, stand up. Robin will, oh you know, join you, and I will make a photo so that he can send it to your friend and as a proof. So let's do like a wow or something like that, and then Robin stands there. Whoops! Oh my God! Goodness, goodness! Oh, wow! Oh, Smiley yeah. faces because it's, and, and be like, oh my God! This was like the best thing it ever. It was, of course. You don't even have to pretend. I uh, no, no, pretend. And all these, you know, the big words like excellent, fabulous, marvelous, life-changing, revolutionary. Woo! People, hands up! Everybody, hands up! Alrighty, thank you so much. Thanks.
to your attention? We don't have time for questions, do we? Yeah, he will be around, so you have time. I'll be around the rest of the day, so if you have any questions, please talk to me. Bye. But don't waste his time. Don't waste know? my time. But buy me drinks. And be sure, be on the point.